Hey everyone, this is Web Submission as part of X3CTF, written by Redbane2001. Uh, it was a very fun challenge. Um, I didn't get to spend too much time on it. We were busy last weekend, so I didn't even solve it. Um, and the route I was going down was completely wrong. But as soon as I saw the submission or the uh, the solution, I was a little bit mad at myself since I've seen the trick before. So I figured I'd make a video and I did a little bit more digging. And uh, it's just it's a it's a fun trick. Um, so for the challenge, we're given a download file. Uh, in the download file, uh, it's a very simple challenge. There's really only two files of interest. There's the Docker file and the index.php. Um, in the Docker file, uh, basically the most important thing is it's going to uh, move the flag file into the uploads folder. So var wwhtml uploads flag.txt and shame on it with 000. Um, so it is in a publicly accessible folder within Apache, uh, but it doesn't have the right permission, so you can't actually read it. Um, then there's a short little index.php file. Uh, and so this is where the challenge actually occurs. Um, it's going to look for a file upload. Uh, it's going to take the file name that you supplied, uh, do a base name on it. It's going to make sure that the file doesn't already exist. It's going to make sure the file is small. It's going to make sure that the file does end in .txt. And if all that works, uh, it'll move the file into the uploads directory, and we are set. Um, but it does one final thing. Uh, it's going to um, change directory into that uploads folder, and then it is going to shell exec chmod 000 star. So every time you upload a file into the uploads directory, uh, everything will be uh, chmodded back to 000, or to 000, um, so all zero permissions, uh, which makes things interesting. Uh, like I said, I only spent a little bit of time on it, but I was going down the complete wrong direction. Um, I thought this was going to be like a Unicode thing with base name because I think there was a Unicode issue with base name for a while and maybe you could kind of trick the directory structure or something like that. Uh, but it turns out the solution on this line um, and specifically uh, this character. <laughs> so this is a bash glob uh, and you can do some fun stuff with it. So uh, I'm going to touch a, a, b, c. Cool. And when I ls, we can see all of it. Now I'm going to touch something a little bit weird. So touch just creates a file. Uh, I'm going to create a file called dash w1 in the current directory. Cool. Now when I type ls, everything pops up. But if I do ls star, we can see now the directory entries go down in a line and our slash w1 entry is missing. Uh, that's very strange. If you do look at the man page for ls, you'll see that it accepts a dash w. Uh, where is it? Uh, dash w, it is a width modifier. So dash w zero will set the output width two calls if we were to pass it. And so if we're to do a, b, c, dash width one, we can see we get the same thing as doing this, <laughs> um, which is pretty crazy. Uh, this means that the star is grabbing all of these files, but treating dash w one as an argument. Um, that's not really what you want, but if we think about how this interface works, it's just kind of like what you're going to get. Um, so the way we have bash and shell, um, it's, you know, it's just a Linux process, uh, and it's to create another Linux process that's going to do the fork and exec. And so that fork and exec, what's going to happen, it's going to call the exec VE syscall. And as part of that syscall, all the process is going to be given is the file name, the argv, so the list of arguments, and the mp. So we can look at what's actually being passed to these processes using strace. So we'll do strace ls uh, star, let's say. And we scroll up to see that exec VE call. And here it is. So when we call star, the arguments being passed to ls that ls will eventually parse is ls, a, b, c, and dash w1. <laughs> and so if we do instead a, b, c, dash w1, you know, without doing the star, you'll see that it's the exact same. Um, so ls has no way of kind of knowing or differentiating like what you meant. Did you mean to pass the file or did you mean to pass this as an argument? It's kind of one of those like data instruction confusion vulnerabilities. Um, so very fun, very cool. Uh, so we have some little trick that we can play with. So if we remember for the challenge, um, this was it. It's going to do chmod 000 star within that directory. And so the gadget we have is we can upload files. And if we upload, you know, <clears throat> we'll be uploading instead of touching. But, you know, we can do like help, for example, if we uploaded this file, eventually when chmod is called with the star, it's going to be chmod 000 file 1, file 2, and file 2, and help. Um, this doesn't really help us, and technically we can't do it because the file name has to end in text, but this is our attack vector. Um, so we can see what is part of chmod. Technically, I think the right solution before we get there, go there, would probably be to go to GTFO bin and see if there's any like known exploits for chmod uh, doing these tricks. Um, it doesn't give us anything for the specific challenge. It just says set UID and sudo, but I think just checking GTFO bin is the right move at first. Uh, but anyways, if we go through the options, uh, so the chmod, we can supply changes, silent, verbose, no prever preserve root, preserve root, uh, Reference file, that one's interesting. Recursive, help, and version. We, if we remember, the file we upload has to end in .text. So the only one we can really do that with is reference. So kind of limits our uh, 
our uh, attack um, space. So it says use our files mode instead of mode values. Um, and if we think about that, that's pretty perfect. So the mode values are the default ones that are passed in, which is 000. And so instead of using those, we can use the mode, the, the permissions, from the file of our choice, and we pass it in. So we can do reference. We'll create a file called reference equals, you know, a.txt or something like that. And as long as a.txt exists, it'll copy those permissions, and then it'll star that to the directory, which will include the flag file, and we'll be able to steal it. Um, cool. So we have a plan. So we're just going to be doing a... We're going to be uploading, but it'll be uploading reference equals and then uh, lol.txt. So the next problem is, though, um, we can upload lol.txt uh, and then do this, like, you know, little reference attack or whatever with chmod. Uh, but the problem is um, when we upload lol.txt, it is also going to do the chmod 000 on it. And so it's going to have zero permissions. So we're just copying zero permissions all over the place. Uh, the way to get around this is ls. Uh, let me go back. Um, sorry, is uh, ls star. Uh, when you do the star globbing, uh, it doesn't pick up hidden files. So you can do touch D, for example, and you'll see it doesn't pop up. But if we do LSLA, we can see uh, it's right here. So we can just create a file that starts like, you know, lol.txt. Um, and when we do this, uh, it won't get picked up by the glob operator in the chain mod. And so it'll have the same permissions, which includes the read permissions. And then when we pass the, what was it, preserve, I think, preserve is equal to dot lol dot text. It'll copy these permissions to everywhere. It'll do that chain mod 000 and then all the files in there. And uh, yeah, the flag file permission should be overwritten and we win. Uh, to make sure that the bash globbing was working how I actually think it works and like how a command is actually executed in bash, um, I did some quick research and it, it, it does what you expect at least. So this I'll, I'll put this in the description if anyone wants to read it. But um, when a command is executed, the, the shell performs the following operations in the following order. Um, so first it's going to do all variable assignments. So you might, you know, when you execute a line of uh, bash, you might have... Uh, like LD preload, for example, it's a variable you might set for that particular execution. So you might have those. And then the important part for this challenge, uh, words that are not variable assignments or redirections are expanded and specifically shell expansions. And so the expel shell expansion that we're interested in is uh, the globbing that's going to happen in here. Um, so a file name expansion. Um, and then after the expansion, uh, it takes the command and then it does some redirections. And at the end, it does expansions for each of the variables. Um, so cool, it kind of makes sense. So like, you're going to have your binary, it's going to do the expansion, and then those are going to be the arguments into the actual process. So the process doesn't really know, was it a passed in, you know, manually typed in by the programmer, or was it passed in because it was a file name? Um, so pretty cool. If you're curious how you could, you know, kind of prevent this issue or protect yourself, uh, a couple different ideas. Um, step one would probably be uh, try to get rid of all the bash calls or anything that calls out to shell. Um, especially since there is already a built-in function for doing chmod. Um, even though this is still a static string, um, we can see bash is uh, very uh, featureful and allows you to do a lot of interesting things with it. And we don't want the expansion to work this way when we're only trying to chmod a single file. Um, some other things you can do is uh, you might be have seen this before, this double slash. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to tell the option parser uh, to uh, treat everything after the double slash as arguments and not options. Um, so we can see things work correctly here. Um, this W1 is not being parsed as an option. Um, really, this is up to the option parser. So not every option parser may respect this. I would imagine most do. Like if you use um, C or C++, you're going to do option parsing. Like most likely, maybe not always, but the, the libc function uh, get opt, for example, will do the parsing for you. Um, or if you use any of the like, you know, uh, I think it's opt parser in Python. Um, it'll do this, but, you know, if someone does something custom, it might not work that way. Um, another thing you can do is you can do dot slash star. So this will match everything in the current directory, but it'll prepend the dot slash so it doesn't get treated as an argument. Um, so something else you can do. Um, you can also turn it off. You can do set uh, dash F and this will disable globbing. But globbing overall is pretty useful. I still use it. So I think personally, I'll probably try to just get into the habit of doing dot slash star. I mean, it seems like a, a reasonable compromise. Um, and where I was trying to also think of like, where else could you use this attack? Uh, and I feel like it's a good, you know, privilege escalation sort of vector. Like you can imagine a cron job that, you know, it does like CD temp and then it like, you know, copy star to, you know, some remote directory or something like that or some other directory. And so maybe you could find this in a cron job that's running as root or any like, you know, some sort of admin bash scripts. I was also thinking if you have a box that has like active SSH users, like maybe you can start, you know, touching sneaky uh, parameters around in the hopes that they use a star uh, with some like GTFO bin. Um, so I think in those cases, you know, getting used to doing this sort of pattern so you don't get exploited would be a, a decent idea if you're in, you know, an aggressive environment like that. 
Um, otherwise, you know, fun challenge. Uh, it was a fun little bug. I a little bit disappointed I didn't catch it at first, but uh, thanks for thanks Rebane two thousand one for uh, creating the challenge and X three three for hosting. And I will see you at the next ETF. Cheers.